welcome to my little film and TV channel. Hope you're all staying safe. Right, today we've got a, a Netflix film. I just tend not to do as many Netflix films because obviously they're usually out there. But this sort of took my interest when I saw the uh, blurb on it and the obviously a bit mixed reviews on it. But uh, it looked, looked pretty good from the trailers I saw. So we're going to, today we're going to have a look at The Devil All The Time. Please, if you're new to the channel, push the subscribe button, push the bell notifications on all these little movie review vlogs and of course, of course I do TV drama reviews and little quizzes and information vlogs as well on stuff you can buy and stuff at the cinema once that kicks up and still gets going but I've sort of not done much on the cinema at the moment because I, I don't think it's where we should be really during this current crisis I don't think being stuck in a poorly air-conditioned cinema certainly in the UK's uh, case is, is a good idea at this time anyway so I'll leave that just for now but anyway, we're going to have a look at a film today. Let's review 18 certificate, this one. The Devil All The Time. Two hours, 18 minutes. So for a film, that is quite long. It's not a, a DC or a Marvel uh, epic. It's, uh, it's a quite long time. It's classed as a psychological thriller and it's based on the novel of the same name by Donald Ray Pollock. That's a good name. Directed and co-written by Antonio Campos. Produced by Jake Gyllenhaal and Randall Poster. So there you go. It stars, amongst others, Tom Holland in the lead role. Bill Skarsgård, Riley Keough, Jason Clark, Sebastian Stan, Hayley Bennett, Eliza Scanlon, Mia Wasikowska and Robert Pattinson. There you go. He's a good, good role for him in this. Got a nice creepy role. It was released on Netflix on September the 18th, oh, September the 16th, sorry, 2020. What's it about? Well, it's summary really. It's sinister characters converge around a young man devoted to protecting those he loves in a post-war backwards town teeming with corruption and brutality. Yeah, I mean, this is the USA, isn't it? I thought it's similar enough, these uh, backwards characters. I mean, I might be wrong. I'm only playing if you're in the UK, US. Don't, uh, don't pick them out. I'm only having a bit of a mess about. But uh, it's not the very nicest place to live, I must admit. Scenery-wise, fantastic. But <laughs> I don't want to... Mixed with the uh, with the population, to be honest with you, not very, not very good, not very nice. I'm sure it's much much better now. Uh, <laughs> I'll get loads of comments now about that. Right, any good? Is it any good? Well, Rotten Tomatoes, sixty five percent positivity rating amongst the critics on Rotten Tomatoes. That's quite healthy. That's based on one hundred and twenty nine reviews. It's good doing these because there's loads. I mean, some of the films I do with that new, there's very little little review or comment. But it's good when you got something like this that a lot of people have seen. And that's an overall rating on Rotten Tomatoes of 6.35 out of 10, with 84 fresh ratings and 45 rotten. So a fair, you know, two, two to one really, wasn't it? But a fair sprinkling of rotten reviews there. There is some neg negativity in some of the comments left on Rotten Tomatoes. We've got, watching it is like spending two hours and change on a hard church pew with nothing to show but a few splinters. Deliver us from evil, please. <laughs> Best to bury this devil in an unmarked grave. The casting alone shall spur interest in the devil all the time, but can't make the movie feel like less of a slog. We never really get to know any of these characters aside from their villainy and or victimhood. They're paper fish in a cardboard barrel. So there is, as I say, that they weren't the only negative comments on Rotten Tomatoes. A couple of positives, I'll finish with a couple of positives. Bleak and grim, just the type of movie I enjoy seeing. An immersive sense of time and place along with richly textured performances from a first-rate ensemble cast keep it consistently compelling. The devil all the time's descent into darkness can be harrowing to the point of punishment, but it's offset by strong work by a stellar cast. I mean, I'm, I'm bordering on that sort of last comment, to be honest with you, myself. Rotten Tomatoes audience, well, they liked it. Again, not not, not unusual to see uh, a slight difference between the audience and the critics. And it's got an 84% positive rating with the Rotten Tomatoes audience based on almost a 1,000 reviews at the time I'm recording this. Metascore, again, the critics not overly impressed, only a 55% rating based on 33 critics' reviews. And it scores anywhere between 4 out of 10 and 8.3 out of 10. Start with the highest was from Entertainment Weekly's Leah 
green blatter who gave it 8.3 out of 10 and went on to say with the cast so large and so consistently good it's nearly impossible to single out more than a few players though it's maybe most gratifying to see Holland so far from Peter Parker mode his performance is delicately underplayed which is not a claim Pattinson can probably make with a straight face so yeah I saw a little bit of criticism in there even though uh, obviously Leah did like it a bit in the middle of the road one is from Empire's Dan Jolin who gave it a 6 out of 10 and said a mixed bag of bones and bodies, whose southern gothic atmosphere and superb performances from Holland especially are let down by the film's lack of narrative fo focus. Narrative focus. Narrative. Narrative focus. Okay, Dan. Well, it's a six out of ten isn't bad, is it? But then you go down to the lowest one, Owen Gleiberman from Variety magazine. Four out of ten, not great. The devil all the time shows us a lot of bad behaviour, but the movie isn't really interested in what makes the sinners tick. And without that lurid curiosity, it's just a series of Sunday school lessons and noir that wants to scrub away the darkness. So I'm not overly impressed. Internet Movie Database, this is where we go into it. We've got a massive 18,600 uh, scores left as I'm reviewing it, as I'm doing this vlog. And it's getting an overall rating, so that's, you know, based on over 18,000 reviews, you can sort of write this in stone, this rating, 7.2 out of 10. So once again, the audience are liking it more than the critics. And you get some, you know, you do get some, I'm not going to go through all the comments because I read out some earlier comments from the critics, but uh, overall it was enjoyed by the paying public and uh, f negativity was, was uh, few and far between. So let's get on to my little thoughts on this one, my little Berners MGM thoughts on this uh, movie uh, a dark tale partially narrated and a voice let's be i'll be honest with you was by donald ray pollock who actually helped narrate this story uh, and that was for me the most annoying part of the movie he just didn't his, his voice just didn't appeal to me one one bit i didn't i don't i just thought someone had strolled into this to the editing suite and done a voiceover with, with certain parts but fortunately he does he's not he doesn't interrupt it that that often so the the gritty tale is introduced to mainly with the mainly dark characters with the odd seemingly ordinary nice person but mainly dark characters in this and, he, and even the good guys have a little bit of darkness to them. yeah there's a little backstory as to how some of the characters became who they were but it really is all about the main character Arvin Russell so someone one of the critics said about the development of characters there but really it's only Arvin Russell with that interested in all, all the rest is sort of feeding into that and Tom Holland superb I mean he obviously it's looking at how he negotiated life and these characters he comes across I mean this is obviously it does spin off to show some of the characters up to whatever they're doing but uh, as I say it becomes unimportant it, yeah it's nice to know the background of some of these characters but it doesn't really matter it sort of works even in a film that's over two hours long uh, superbly shot and well acted as well very very odd there weren't many actors let the old production down to be honest with you and I think that just over two hours it was about right I didn't I didn't grow bored with it uh, there's a lot of switching backwards and forwards the year going through the years which is okay because uh, what they do they put the titles on the screen which help but obviously this may be old-fashioned but useful in this instance perhaps some more more modern films could do with the uh, dates and times being put back on films rather than you having to try and figure it out like a like a quiz or a, a general knowledge quiz as to what year we're looking at now looking at someone's hairstyle or how old they look or stuff like that so yeah all credit all credit for the fact that they've actually written dates on when a, when a change of, change of time is made which is fant you know, fantastic I'm, I'm getting old I need this sort of help I can understand the critique it certainly wasn't the easiest of watches and it did have an unusual soundtrack. It had me a little tapping along to some of the things and other things. I was like, what the hell's this they're playing? You know, it, uh, occasionally it was annoying, the soundtrack. But most of the time it did work. And some some great old-fashioned songs that even I here in the UK sort of knew, even though obviously probably more American-based American, American -based, some of the songs, I did sort of know most of them. Uh, as mentioned by Joe Morgenstern in the Wall Street Journal, he went. He said, "Mr. Campos and his superb cast confer such an authority on the whole thing that there's no choice but to follow the film's three time hopping, befuddingly intertwined stories." And I think he possibly sums the film up there in what he what he said there. Some some watchers appear not to have accepted 
sort of small faults in this movie, which there are, don't get me wrong. I mean, I watched this with my good lady and she's, it's not the sort of film I would normally watch, but she sort of quite got into it and it sort of grew and it was one of those that after half an hour, she could have easily said, oh, let's let's stop this. But uh, obviously the payout, the payoff at the end was, was worth it to watch the whole two hours, 10 minutes. Well, some watchers don't appear to accept uh, accept the movie's faults and uh, those that have gone with it have liked it and there you go, that's how it is. I certainly went with it. I certainly give it the time and, and the effort and there's a, there are criticisms, as I said. It certainly didn't, it wasn't a 100% filler for me. It didn't totally inspire me and it certainly, as I said, it's not... It is weird. It is weird that uh, so many dark characters are in such a small space in the US and obviously it's... it's uh, it's not a true story, is it? So, you know, at the end of the day, it's entertainment, quite dark entertainment. But to be honest with you, I don't think Netflix have done better movies. This is one of Netflix's better movies in, in recent times. Uh, I think Antonio Campos, the director, will do that, divide opinion as a director as he goes along. So we'll expect to see more criticism and more people liking him as time goes along. So my little rating for this, as I say, it's... Uh, I couldn't wholeheartedly say, oh yeah, everyone's going to love this, but uh, yeah, it's worth sticking with. And as I say, it is. It does have its faults, but I'm going to I'm going to give it better than a watchable rating. I'm going to give it a very watchable rating, which is my six point five out of ten. So I was quite impressed. As I said, I think uh, Netflix, as in, as Amazon Prime, I talked about them the other day. They do put some rubbish out there, especially these dub things they're offering from various countries. And on, occasionally, you find a. You know, I find a, a jewel, a jewel there, but um, very few and far between. And this is one of the best of the of sort of the English language efforts they've put out quite recently. The poster, yeah, the poster's okay. It says, you know, it's, it's I wouldn't, I won't be embarrassed having it on the wall at the back there. I, I think it's okay. Nothing fantastic, nicely done, very well put together. So yeah, so I'm going to give the poster the basic six out of ten, which is my bold poster that said, yeah, if someone said, yeah. You know, you can have this for a couple of quid. I'd probably buy it and stick it on the wall. So, yeah, I'm going to give the post a 6 out of 10. So today the movie wins. Obviously, the movie gets 6.5 out of 10, 6.5 out of 10. The poster gets 6 out of 10. Let me know in the comments. And if you get to watch this or you've watched it already, what you, what you thought. As I say, I can fully understand the critic of people not liking it. Uh, but uh, overall, I was, yeah, overall I did like it. And overall, my good lady liked it as well. So that, that probably added half a point as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please check my links on screen. If you follow or friend me on Facebook and Twitter, I make sure I check every couple of days and make sure I follow and friend everyone back on there. And if you can look at my little website, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s board games, that'll be absolutely fantastic. And if you know anyone who's into UK football, English football particularly, and especially Manchester City, please check my playlist for all my vlogs to do on Manchester City's history and Manchester City now. So please, or even if you know someone, if you can point them in my direction, thank you very much. And thumbs up are nice. If you're still with me, please give us that thumbs up. Views are always nice, but thumbs up are fantastic as well. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this little Netflix movie review. I hope you enjoyed it. All I can say is please look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. Let's all look after each other. And I can only ask everybody to please stay safe, everyone, till we meet again. Bird is saying thanks for watching. Bye-bye.